what he does to fit in. You know? As bad come and I, but I have yes, hard to learn with matches. As shari matches in space, pet ke barbe. Um, good influence. What's what's good influence? Love. What's in? I said to you, pet ke one na as shari varan. You gotta leave a good influence. See, I believe this is my personal opinion. This is John talking. I think that if we as Christians talk to someone that is not a Christian and they don't know we're a Christian, right? I think that if we talk to them, we're just talking conversationally, I think within five or ten minutes they should notice something different about you. The way you talk, the way you uh, act, and the way you, you know, just how you are, your demeanor is. They should be able to tell the difference. Right? I mean, I believe that. Yes, God, but Ashkar mezi nain em dar pir bet ke nain, dar pir pam ma bet ke desna. Asan pam ma gavor irens ke kashigor. Our lives must draw people to Jesus, not away. Draw people to me, no, to Jesus, not the other way around. And and. The reason why I said do not love the world, that verse I put as a beginning, is because living like the world never, ever, ever brings people to Jesus. Never. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because they say, this is, this is what I think they say, why do I need to become a Christian and follow all those rules when I can just continue to do what I'm doing anyway? You're doing it, they say. You know what I'm saying? Why the rules end that? I don't need rules. Because they think Christianity is rules. When Christianity is freedom. And I said it before, but I'll say it again. Look at the way Jesus lived. Just follow Jesus' life. You know, look. People will... <laughs> People will often say, well, Jesus sat with sinners. Jesus uh, was around drunk people. Well, number one, the Bible never states anywhere in the Bible that Jesus drank and got drunk. That's one. Nowhere in the Bible. Number two, if you notice, even when he's around sinners, he's always the one controlling the conversation that always goes to God. Always. So, we're supposed to be around sinners. We're supposed to be light, and we'll see it later. But it's, what are we doing with it? Make ayo. Shun chernis ashkara bidallah, misht. And I don't think Christians should only have, and this is going to be weird, but I don't think Christians should only have Christian friends. How are you going to impact anybody's life, ever? One of my best friends is a non-Christian. But... I act different around him. Different than him. Um, I read another thing that I thought was awesome, and we'll get into this, but I, said, I read that today uh, in churches, when, and when I use the word sinner, don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm saying a non-believer. Okay? So today in a church, when a non-believer comes in, and they feel comfortable, Listen, when a non-believer comes into a church, when a non-believer comes into a church and feels comfortable, there's something wrong. Why? Because um, heaven has to come down in a church. And the dark and the light don't mix, so they'll always feel uncomfortable if it's truly light is there. What's happening too often, I read, is that instead of heaven coming down, the world is coming in. And, and unbelievers are coming in and out of churches without once feeling convicted or uncomfortable. I guess we're doing a pretty good job here, you know. <laughs> you know? <laughs> One of my favorite authors said, blessed is the man that empties churches. You know. <laughs> anyway, 
I figured you guys would laugh a little bit, and you did. Okay, so, we okay so far? So now we're going to look at, we're just going to break this down into two points, okay? We're going to look at the salt and the light and to understand what it means for us. Um, you know, the Armenian is very close to the original translation as opposed to some of the English translations. So, um, how shall we live? Very easy, we have to be salty in verse 13. It's, Jesus said, you're the salt of the earth. Listen, in order for us to understand, in order for us to understand the message that Jesus is saying, we have to understand salt back in those days. Salt is different back then. Salt was very valuable back then. Um, I read somewhere that soldiers got paid with salt. Um, but in the book of Job, there's a question. Hoping Mitch Hartsunga. Can flavorless food be. Food, not food. Can flavorless <laughs> food be eaten without salt? Answer? No. no. So I say, can a flavorless Christian ever influence those around them? No. Arans ari Christonia, if you ask an Arasele Jesus inch kesetko, right? Arans ar lalu Christonian gerna shurichelun lav orinagalal gam gam asetutun ne chigna. Listen, Christians are not the saviors of the world. Please get that out of your head, Christian. Don't. <laughs> You're not the savior. But you have an influence on those around you. Listen, when disaster happens, who's the first person there? Normally it's Christians. We know that. Um, when, 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 when things go wrong, who's the first one to offer help? The Christian. Always. They usually are. It's usually one or two groups. It's usually Samaritan's Purse. It's usually the, the Red Cross, which is a Christian organization. I mean, I don't know where it is now, but it was... Oh, the Salvation Army. Excuse me. The Salvation Army is always there first. It's Christian Mishpet Kela. Himanayne Hisusin Choskele Yeborosa Vor Tukek Yergiri. Nay, at para hayrin inche. Earth, what's the word? Is it Yergri? Ahav. Yergri. The earth. Jesus didn't say you're the salt of the world. He said you're the salt of the earth. Look at those words. Salt of the earth, not world. Now, in the Greek, when Jesus said you are the salt of the earth, you know what he was saying? This is what the Greek translation is. You alone are the salt of the earth. He was saying, it's only us. The Christians alone are the salt of the earth. Why? Because basically, sometimes we're the only hope for the lost people. What does salt do? Does anyone know? Back in those days. Preserve. It flavors. Preservative. It preserves. It permeates. You know what permeates is? It, it, it goes in. It kind of penetrates too. Um, it also purifies. Our influence is a big deal. Mer asetuna nede. You may think you're not. Listen. You may think you're influencing nobody, because a lot of us will think that. I was watching. You may think you're not influencing anyone, but I believe God will make sure you are, and I believe even Satan will make sure someone is watching you. I think he will. Arrow. 
Martik Kiskasim Mezi Tide. When we look, you can tell someone you're a non believer, atheist, you hate everything, they won't even care what you do. But the minute you say, Well, I became a born again Christian, oh, really? The next morning, then they're watching you. Then they question everything you do. That's the way it is. In those days, let me just tell you real quick, and then we'll move on. They would sometimes pay soldiers in salt. I told you why. Because salt was viewed upon as very precious. You say, why pay soldiers in salt? In chu zinvonerun ahov gubajarin. Zinvonerun ahov gunain. Taramche ahe. In chu. It says. Vorobe de aida adene ye vor badrazmi adene lane verke lane e inch pitin in verke. Vor neo sporen chigar et adene. Pana chigar. Um. Spirito. What? Alcohol? Spirito in chere ne? Very good. I don't think she got inch get name, I'll get the name. You said, I could savvy. Now you say, I really love a make jump savvy that can't infection and unmade neither. See, they pay the people in salt. Why? Because when they go to war and they get a little cut on their hand or they get, you know, stabbed or whatever, they need to heal that. And salt, because it's like a preservative or it's not a healer, listen. One thing I read was this, salt doesn't prevent infection, but it can help it. We can't prevent sin in the world. But we can help the sinner. That's what this, these people would do. Jesus called his disciples, listen, and the reason why um, I read this and, and the guy said, yeah, salt is precious. And Jesus called us salt because you know why? Jesus sees us as precious. We are precious in his sight. We have to remember that. Make shut we go through that, all of us. We go through that. We argue with the Lord. Why did you create me like this? You made a mistake. I'm not precious. I'm a loser. We all say it. Second thing is, in those days, like Vana said before, is that salt was used to preserve. In Armenian, I don't know what preserve is. What they would do back then is they would take meat and they would rub salt on it, preserve it, and, and save it from rotting. Listen. And the reason why I say this, and people may argue with me, but I, I believe this is true, and this is why I want to I'll use a Bible verse to back it up, but I believe that the judgment of God is near on the United States. I think, in fact, Jesus is at the door waiting, but I think the only thing that's holding him back is the Christian right now. Because we are preserving the earth. We are keeping it from the judgment coming. And how, look, how? You say how? When we look at the Old Testament, there's a, there's a very common conversation with two, with God and another man, about this same thing. Judgment was falling on two cities. I skipped that verse. Genesis 18, 32 to 33, real quick, we, the, the story. Uh, God's looking over Sodom and Gomorrah. He sees the people like ungodly as all. Uh, Homosexuality is going crazy. Everything is nuts there. Wow, sounds like America. And remember, Abraham has a nephew in Sodom. His name is Lot. Um, Hoft? Abrahamin Tordiga gesetzt. Ich bohre daran, Kuirigin daran, Jemmy der Overland, Tordla, Ich bohre daran, Hoft Arnov Mega Sotomin Mecha. 
има Абрама си киде, не вас вазе са, вор ес ингелес Абрами инчу кахни бит бахи меса. Ес бите семи да не са. I'm going to tell him, why am I going to hide something from my friend Abraham? He said. So I said, I'm going to destroy Sodom. And then Abraham, I guess this is where the Jews became bargainers, because Abraham started bargaining with God. You can delete that Harry from the video. <laughs> uh, that's all right. I didn't offend the Jews. I just... So they're going back and forth. God said, Abraham, I'm going to destroy Sodom. Abraham said, but God, wait a second. You're merciful, you're gracious. We don't want your name to be messed up. The people are going to say bad things. So Abraham, God, let me ask you, could you destroy it if there's 50 righteous people in Sodom? No, nope, not for 50. Okay, wait one second, God. What about 45? See, he's bargaining. No, I won't. 40? No. 40? 45? No. 40? Um, no. 30? No. 20? No. 10? All right, you're pushing it. But 10? No. Look, then he said, Let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak but one more time. Suppose 10 should be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of 10. So the Lord went his way as soon as he had finished speaking with Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. That's why I believe we preserve the earth. The Christians preserve the earth. But you're saying, wait a second, John. God destroyed Sodom. Exactly. There weren't ten righteous people. Lot was supposed to be the salt in Sodom, but he wasn't. He was the opposite. Lot fit into the world. He actually became like a very high, well-known person in Sodom. So for us too. And look, you don't go out and tell people, hey, you know I'm preventing the wrath of God from coming? You better thank your lucky stars for me. You don't say that. But you tell them, look, Jesus is coming. He loves you. Don't waste any more time. So, number one, what was it? Precious, number two, uh, uh, preserves, number three, is it's, it flavors, it's flavorful. Hamguda. Arahamguda. So, just like today, people put salt on their food. My wife always yells at me because I will put salt before tasting the food. And I'm not a salt eater, but she doesn't put salt in her food, and she knows that, and that's why she does it. Um, look, Christians are to be the most loving people in the world. Make a minister of bitke litsun alam. Make bitke hamdak ashkari. I read it somewhere. It says disciples, if they if they are true to their calling, they make the earth purer and more flavorful place. And more flavorful. Disciples, if they are true to their calling, make the earth a purer and more flavorful place. How can I be more flavorful? Look, when I'm more loving, I'm more flavorful. Um, we're supposed to be the most understanding, the most encouraging people on this planet. We are supposed to speak life to people, not death. We're not to speak condemnation to people. Someone will never come to Jesus by saying, you're a sinner, you're going to go to hell. No one's going to understand that. No one's going to get it. And no one's going to say, well, if that's the case, well, I don't want your God because he's mean. No, what they want to hear is, you know what? You are a sinner, but there's a God out there who loves the sinner and wants to change the way you are. Because I'm sure you hate what you do. Because a lot of them maybe don't like what they do. Some of them may like it, but still there's something missing in their heart. Paul said this. Paul said, listen, Christian. He said, let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. 
If your words are salty, you'll always know how to answer in a very encouraging, loving way. Why? Because you're salty. You're flavorful. That sounds weird, I know. We should build people up, not tear them down. Martots make bitke verhane kante idens varzarnel. Here's another thing, one other thing, and then I do want to get to the light, and I will. Salt is often white, right? We're supposed to be pure. We're supposed to, as much as possible, be pure and stay pure. Aga germagala, it germaganaisne makur. Pure parachemki that pites makur. Christianian bedke vorcha borgernani makur mana. Pure. And then Jesus said, so we understand what salt is, how we're supposed to be, but he said, but wait a minute, if salt loses its flavor, he said, it's, it's, you might as well just throw it out in the street and let it be walked on. Because it's useless, he said. Now, I could sit here and tell you chemically what salt is, but I'm not going to do that. But honestly, today salt never loses its flavor the salt of today because it's like got preservatives and stuff in it but back then they took salt from the Dead Sea it was always mixed with other things dirt and all that other stuff so what would happen is normally the salt if they would throw it in the food but if it was no good and it got wet it would dissolve and all you're left with is dirt useless so what do they do with that? they throw it out in the street and the horses walk all over it what is Jesus saying? Jesus is saying that if a Christian isn't salty, we're not worth very much. Listen to what I'm saying. It doesn't mean you're not going to go to heaven. You get what I'm saying? It just means that you're not doing much for the kingdom of God. And God looks at it as, oh, you had so much potential, but you're wasting it. Christian, you have a lot of potential. If only you give yourself to the Lord. Don't waste it. Because then... Honestly, you're like he said, um, you're, wa you're, 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 you're wasted talent, unfortunately. You know who's a great picture of wasted talent in the Bible? Um, Samson. You know what? Judas was probably a wasted talent too. We have to make people... Um, and I put this for it too. What does salt do? It makes you thirsty, right? We have to make people thirsty for Jesus. Hunger for the Lord. The second thing. I hope you guys are following along here. Is we have to be lights. Luis Petkirlank. How shall we live? We have to be lights. Jesus said, you're the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor does do they lamp, light a lamp and put it under a basket, but under on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Again, Jesus said, You alone are the light. I want to read a verse. Philippians 2, chapter 14 and 15. Um, but it says, do everything without complaining and arguing, so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. Listen, the word Paul uses here for light is different than the word Jesus says for light. Jesus, when he says light, he just says light. Like light, like a, you know, a lamp. The word Paul uses here is called, um, the word is luminary. And you're like, what does that mean? Um, it means brightness. It means like how an angel shines. Like they radiate with brightness. That's the word Paul uses for Christians today. Why do I say that? In, in John chapter 8, Jesus said, I am the light. Follow along, because I'm going to make a point. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. That's what he said. I'm the light of the world, he said. He who 
who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. He says, I'm the light of the world. Now go back to what Paul said. You're a luminary. You're a brightness. What does that mean? Brightness normally means that you're not a source of light. You're a reflection. The moon has no light. Zero. It's a luminary. What does that mean? What is the moon? A reflection of what? The sun. So, Christian, Jesus called us a light of the world. He says, I'm the light of the world. He pretty much put a lot of pressure on us. It's a great compliment and a great responsibility. I am brighter when I spend time with the light. The closer I am to the light source, the brighter I am. That's the point Jesus is making. Jesus is saying, you're just a reflection of me, so be careful what you're doing. You're a reflection of me, he's saying. We, and, and you know, I can talk freely here, but we are to shine so bright. Mink we have to be so bright and we have to shine so bright that that, that Jesus needs to be seen in everything we say and everything that we do. It's a, it's a high calling. It's pressure. What's the matter? Oh. It's a lot of pressure. But see, Jesus is so good though. He says, listen, don't kill yourself to try to be the source of the light because you're not. I'm the source of the light. You just get closer to me and you're naturally going to shine. You're just going to shine on your own. Remember in the book of Acts? Acts 4.13, what does it say? It says that when Peter and John were in, 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 uh, talking with the Pharisees and stuff, they were answering them, they were answering back, they were answering them, they finally left, they said, you know what? And they were amazed because they knew that they had been with Jesus. They were shining. Didn't Stephen's face radiate when he looked up to heaven? Stepane. Stepanos. Yet were Stepanos a gemener go each a sin. Yet no, men in Arache, yet were go Josergo. The sin were idiotes, guys, this for Hrestagibes a gepilergo. Moses, Venela, Ilera, Varicha, Asuener, Canior, Carasuno, Varicha, Acha Borgeres a gepilergo, Betke Cotsay were the Martic Vachnango. Because the glory of the Lord was upon his face. Listen, Christian, we have a, a greater advantage than all these people. We have the Holy Spirit with us constantly. We have the Word of God right in front of us. When you read, it's like light comes up and hits you in the face. Does it not? And then Jesus says you cannot, he says you can't light a lamp. You give me five more minutes. I'll let you guys out of here at 3.15. I promise 3.15. I promise 3.15. Jesus said, you can't put a light and put it under a basket. Or you can't take it and put it under a basket. You can't hide light. What does that mean? A Christian can't hide himself or herself. There's no such thing as a secret Christian. That's devil talk. I'm an undercover Christian. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. I'm sorry, if you're an undercover Christian, then all you're doing is doing this verse right here. Whoever confesses me before men, I will confess before my Father. But whoever denies me before men, I will deny before my Father in heaven. You're just denying Jesus and you don't know it. If you're an undercover Christian. You should have a show called the Undercover Christian. 
but name the main character Christian. No, I'm kidding. Mink, Bitke, Mir, Luisa, Pali. Checke dann Bahir. Ja, wie so schön, tun wir das. Das ist aber Menge Lamp, Lamba, I don't know. Lamba, Chiva, die Angorin, da wird Chiva in der Sau. Hinter tun wir die. It's craziness. You don't put a lamp. And back then, by the way, lamps are fire, right? He said, what happens? Someone said this. What happens when you put a lamp under a bed? It either, it, it's either dark or it burns. You keep hiding your Christianity, you're going to burn on the inside. You keep hiding your Christianity. I keep hiding my Christianity. I'm going to um, burn inside. All right? We are to be lights in the world. Why? So that people see Jesus. Uh, you know, in the airplanes when you fly, especially when you fly at night, when you come down a runway, there's a light that shines. It's an arrow that's like maybe a thousand feet before the runway, and it goes like this to the runway. And then there are lights along the runway and lights in the middle of the runway. Why? So the planes can land on the target. Yeah, Christian, we're to be that arrow. And the runway is Jesus. It's bright. Imagine it was dark. Planes would be landing in water everywhere. Think about it. Very simple illustration, but think about it. People are walking in a dark world they don't know. Satan has got them blinded. Remember, the Bible says that he is the prince of the power of the air. He is the father of darkness, basically. And he's blinded everybody in the world. Jesus said, let your light so shine. Okay? Shine your light. But remember, you're just a reflection. You're, you're just a reflection. Don't try to be the light. Like you know all the answers. You're not the light. You're a reflection of the light. Why? Because Jesus says, if you try to be the light, ultimately you're going to want all the glory. But when you're just a reflection, my Father in Heaven is going to get the glory. And that's where the true blessing is, He says. Verse, First John 5, this is the message which you have heard from me. Last verse. From me and declare to you. That, I, I lied. There's one more verse. Sorry. That God is light. God is light, and in Him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with Him and walk in darkness, we lie. And don't practice the truth. Now here's all you DC Talk fans. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. Listen, when you walk in darkness, you constantly feel condemned. You constantly feel like the blood of Jesus isn't good enough. But when you walk in the light, you're like, you know what? No, I'm forgiven. Okay, I had a bad five minutes. I'm forgiven because I'm walking in the light. Even in the light, sometimes we trip over stuff. But rarely do you fall in the light. You fall in darkness. We have to be very careful. <laughs> Look, you can, you can close your Bibles. Christians are to be ministers in the world of love and truth. Why? Because the world is filled with hate and lies. Jesus said in John 13, this is, this is what I said, I have one more verse, but Jesus said, a new commandment I give you, you love one another, he said. He said, they're going to know you by your love. They're not going to know you by anything else. A Christian will always want to be salty and bright because they love. They love those around them. They love the sinner. Listen, love the sinner, not the sin. Love the sinner, not the sin. Always remember that. Love the sinner. Listen, if... We don't love... If Jesus never loved the sinner, we'd all be condemned right now. Remember that. I think love is what commands us to be salt and light. I think it is. If you love, you can't stand to see a flavorless and dark world. You're going to always want to do something. I'm not saying you're going to save the world. But you know what? You can have an influence and you can shine brightly. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land 
with your glory. As a shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory. Please, Spirit, please set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. We have to stop because after that it's just water and stuff. <laughs> Listen. In the end, remember this, salt is on the inside. It's usually your actions and your influence. Light is always on the external. It's the works that you do. Jesus put them back to back. It makes a difference. It always starts with salt. It always starts on the inside. And if you cleanse the inside, and if you become purified on the inside, it'll always come out and you'll be bright on the outside. Remember that. Remember that. Okay? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. Jesus, we praise you for this simple message of salt and light, Lord. Yeah, Lord, I'm sure we've all read it many times and looked at it differently, but Lord, now I pray that you reveal something new to, to, to us in this, Lord, and, and help us all to be salt and to be light, Lord, not to be ashamed of who we are and that is sons and daughters of the Most High God, Lord, and to walk worthy of our calling, Father. Lord, you called us you said we, you are. You are salt. So Lord, I pray that we stop failing in being salt and start succeeding, Lord. You call us light. You didn't say you might be or you should be. You said you are. We already are. We are a reflection of you, Lord. It just means that either we're dim or we're bright. Help us all to be bright, Lord, and desire to, desire to get brighter and brighter and brighter and brighter. And that only comes by being closer to you. Help us, Lord. Help everyone here. I know it's going to be like a rush, Lord. Everyone needs to get to somewhere. Please manage our time, Lord, and extend our time as well. And help us the rest of this evening now. In Jesus' name, amen.